Lovely people, if you make sourdough bread and use the slap and fold technique, I have a question for you. Are you doing it right? I've seen a lot of bakers on the internet not getting the maximum benefits from their slap and fold. So let's talk about what we're trying to achieve here, and then I'm going to demonstrate it. Two goals. One is to increase gluten strength, and the second is to incorporate air. Now, I see a lot of bakers doing the incorporate air part really well, which is the flip in the slap and fold. Uh, the fold in the slap and fold. <laughs> the technique that sort of flips the dough over, the fold over, incorporating the air. That's great. What I see as a problem with the slap and fold technique is that people think that the slap is the most important part. And really, all the slap is achieving is the sticking of the dough to the surface so that we can pull the dough and then flip it over or fold it over. And that's where everyone is doing it wrong. Most people slap their dough down and immediately fold it over without taking the time to get a really good stretch in the dough like I'm doing here. This is key. Remember, our first goal is to increase gluten strength. So what I want you to repeat in your mind as you're doing this technique is not slap and fold, but stretch and fold. Slap the dough down, stretch it to its full capacity, and then fold it over. As you go along, you'll feel the gluten start to tighten up. When you feel that, flip the dough over to a more relaxed side, usually the side against the table. And pro tip, don't panic if you feel like your dough is relaxing more than it's strengthening. What happens with this technique is that your dough starts out tight because of the salt you've added, and this process loosens it. The gluten relaxes, it has more elasticity. It even feels floppier than when you started. But then, magically over time, those gluten bonds start to strengthen. You know you're turning the corner when all sides of the dough are smooth. It's not tearing. The surface doesn't look shaggy like it did back here. Depending on your dough and the speed of your slap and fold, this process can take up to 10 minutes. I do a window pane test. I stretch the dough out thinly until it breaks. I want to see good strength development, but still leave room for improvement through the rest of bulk fermentation. By the way, I should mention that I'm working with a large dough here. This will make four one kilogram loaves. The slap and fold is better suited to smaller doughs, unless of course you're looking for a good arm workout. I hope this helps you refine your slap and fold technique. If you found this helpful, then check out my course, How to Make Great Sourdough Bread. I dive deep into the science of sourdough so that you can make more consistently great bread. So go check it out by clicking the link on the screen. There's also a link below the like button. Let's make great sourdough bread together.